I'm Tom Johnson, Thomas Johnson Antique Furniture Restoration in Gorham, Maine. This is a nice uh, oak drop leaf table. Uh, it's made out of quarter sawn oak. I don't know how old it is, I can't tell. Uh, they've been making tables like this for three, four hundred years, so it gets kind of hard to tell sometimes. You can see it's a good sized table like six feet by five feet long. It's got nice pad feet. It's got this nice uh, bead detail on the tops of the legs. Uh, one of the main things that was wrong with it is that these hinges on this leaf, the hinges have come loose, so we've got to repair that. And also, the, the top just doesn't look good. It's got lots of marks and rings. There's a lighter area in the top, probably from damage. I've probably got to refinish this top too. Maybe we'll find some clues on the underside of the table here. You can see right away that the hinges have been replaced, so that doesn't really tell us too much. There's a number of these pieces of metal across the cracks on both leaves. Certainly, those pieces of metal look very old. There's lots of glue blocks around the inside of the apron. Some of them look old, some newer. Lots of other repairs. There's just a piece of wood going across this crack in the top. This hinge arrangement on the swing leg. You know, it's a wooden hinge. I don't know if that provides any information on age or not. I've certainly seen wooden hinges like this on late uh, 18th century tables, but I don't know the history of that. Yeah, here's the hinge that was loose. The other one's down there. <clears throat> you can see that the it was plugged, the new screws were put in, but those plugs pulled out, so I've got to do a better job. I just realized the hinges on this leaf, these hinges appear to be the same hinges that are on the other side, but they look original. This has not been cut out for a bigger hinge. Also, there's no screws from underneath uh, connecting the top to the base. Uh, possibly it's nailed from the top, and that would be another indication of being an old table. The legs are mortise and tenon. You can see these scribe marks from when they cut the tenon. This brace in the middle is also mortise and tenon. It looks like it has two tenons that are wedged. And none of that really tells us much about the age of the table. But it does tell us that it's handmade. So I want to check for any uh, repair work that needs to be done. Yeah, I had noticed this one before. These tops have a lot of cracks in them, joints coming apart, but uh, most have been repaired before. Yeah, the center section's got a crack down the middle, but I am not going to take this apart. It's got, uh, it's, this top is nailed down to the frame. It's got two nails right here. Uh, it's got a brace underneath in the middle. 
doesn't seem to be moving at this end. I'll just work some glue in here, clamp it, and then uh, maybe put an additional piece of wood across the bottom. Yeah, you could, you could see it. There's a dowel in there. I think maybe you can see that dowel in there. <laughs> Here are the pencil lines, the marks that the person used for their doweling jig. There's a dowel in there. Uh, here's the, another mark, so you know a dowel is there. This end is tight. Now, I see movement. I'm going to wedge this open starting at this end. I may not take it all the way off. I'll start with some wedges at this end and just kind of see what happens. It's, uh, I don't know, I think maybe I should try to force this more open.
Now it looks uh, tight. I got squeeze out and uh, you know it's fairly level. Okay, we'll, uh, we'll leave these clamps on overnight. Okay, I'm going to strip these tops using a conventional varnish remover. This is the kind that has uh, methylene chloride in it. And this is uh, what I do to prepare. It's only in the 30s outside today, so earlier I turned up the heat to 70, put it on hold. Turned on all my electric heaters. I put one heater aiming directly at the stripper cans here to heat it up to 70 degrees if I can, or at least as much as possible. Stripper fumes are heavier than air, so I'll crack the big door down here at the bottom and turn on the fan.
okay, I'm going to let these set for 20 or 30 minutes. Okay, let's try uh, scraping it. Yeah, this looks like it's coming up pretty clean. Let me uh, try a piece of steel wool. Yeah, that's coming nice and clean. And so now I'll do the two leaves the same way. Okay, I've let these dry overnight and uh, they look really good. Uh, except for these spots, which I hope are watermarks. Uh, this is a burn, so it's not coming out of there. So I want to treat these with oxalic acid, see if that will take care of these marks. Um, and you can't just treat that area, I have to treat the whole tabletop. I'm going to sand it lightly with 220 first, um, just to help prepare the surface a little bit for the treatment. Just cleaning off the surface a little bit here. I'm going to mix four tablespoons of uh, oxalic acid in a quart of hot water. That black square mark is gone. This mark is already lightened up considerably. I hope it keeps going. just for a little while, you know, 15 or 20 minutes or so, I'll go back and hit these areas that are dry. And especially I'll put a little bit more where that mark is. Now, I want to show you something. This is the water laying on the surface. You see how it's not flowing out. That's going to be a problem. We'll talk about that later. Okay, you can see that the oxalic is dried. You can see all the oxalic crystals. Uh, that one black mark went away completely. This round mark uh, 
uh, really improved a lot, but it's still there. This is the point at which these exolic uh, crystals can become dangerous if they become airborne, so it's important to thoroughly rinse all this away. I'm also mopping the floor up in here because exolic spilled on the floor. I know someone's going to walk in here with no shoes on and then lick their feet, and I'm not mentioning any names, but... Okay, they've dried for a few hours. I'm going to sand them again with 220 again and uh, give them another treatment, maybe a little stronger. I'd like to see this ring go out. This sandpaper is really gumming up a lot more than yesterday. I'm going to wipe this down with some lacquer thinner, see if we can pull some of this oil out of here. So the lack of thinner dried, I switched to free cut paper and uh, it's sanding up a lot better. Okay, another coat of oxalic acid, just like the last one. Okay, I've let that dry overnight. Um, you know, this coat was twice as strong as the last coat of oxalic acid. And you can see that, you know, all the dried crystals on top. So now I'll take this outside and rinse it off just like last time. Okay, I've let these dry actually for a couple of days, and so uh, I'm ready to take the next step, which will be staining. The uh, second coat of oxalic acid, although it was stronger, I mean, it, it helped more with this circle. It's not gone completely, but to do anything else would involve a lot of sanding, and I'm just not going to sand this top with anything other than a 220. But I remembered uh, I still have to fix the screw holes in these leaves for the hinges. I'll do that before I do anything else. Yeah, it's easy to see that these need to be repaired. And this wood in here uh, almost appears to be rotted. Uh, it's already gone through the top. I may need to go with a patch all the way through to the top. I'm going to add a little uh, support under here with some clamps uh, because I'm probably going to go through to the top there so I want this well supported. I seem to be getting down to some white wood before going through. That's what I want to see, white wood. All this blackness seems so strange. It seems like this table was just soaked down in oil, top and bottom, everywhere. I don't know if it was raw linseed oil. It, it seems like almost like motor oil, although I don't detect any smell.
Okay, identical routine for this repair. Just like the last one, before I ever could get that bottom flat, I'd be through the top. So that's why I mixed hide glue with the sawdust, layered the bottom, and then used you know unthickened hide glue for everything else. I'm relying on the side joints here. Okay, there's a few screw holes like these that need to be plugged. People use a lot of things to fill screw holes. They'll use uh, just glue, uh, toothpicks, matchsticks, uh, glue and toothpicks, dowels and plugs. And uh, we all know what uh, dowels are, but in this case we're asking these three quarter inch screws to hold a lot of weight on these leaves which are even moving at times. And so I want to use plugs and I want to sort of demonstrate the difference between a dowel and a plug. What happens when you screw into a dowel? Now let's have a look. So you can see it looks good. The threads of the screw cut into the wood really well. But remember with a dowel the grain runs lengthwise. So the screw threads are cutting away the very thing that gives the wood the strength. The wood doesn't seem very strong does it? So practically speaking Dowels can work well for doing most screw holes, but I want maximum strength on these leaves, so I want to use a plug. What's a plug? Well, the plug is cut from a piece of wood, and it's cut this way. In other words, the grain's running across the plug. I think it'll be helpful if I show how plugs are made. You select the proper size plug cutter for the job you're doing. Let's try a half inch just for a demonstration. So a plug is you know, fundamentally different than a dowel in that the grain runs perpendicular to the grain in a dowel. Let's see what happens. Instead of drilling into the plug though, I'll drill into this board. Remember, this is where the plug came from, right there. So here you go, it looks a lot like the dowel. The threads cut really well into the wood. But there's a big difference between this and the dowel. Remember that the strength of wood runs with its grain. These threads have cut, you know, with the grain. In the dowel, the threads have sheared off the end grain, which is just cannot be as strong as this.
couple of nails in there. At first I thought these hinges had been replaced. Now I think that the hinges were moved because the hinges on the other side have not been moved and they look like the same hinges. I've kept the screws in order so each screw will go back into the hole I took it out of. As I tighten these I'm constantly aware of the top here. I don't want anything poking through the top. That needs to be drilled. Drilling into tops is never fun. And this is one of our plugs. Huh. Oh, interesting. There's a couple of dowels that somebody used. I think a lot of the problem here was that the screws they used were too short. These are half inch. I'll go with three quarters. These are old three-quarter tens. Here's one that's already sawed off a bit. This is mine compared to the one that came out of there. This top is just three quarter of an inch thick, yet uh, I'm putting three quarter inch screws in it. We need maximum holding power for these big leaves. 
So how does that work? I've set my tape at 5 eighths. My screw is a full three quarter inch long. I'm kept constantly checking underneath. I don't want anything poking through. Now I stop short just by a little bit there and then back it out. Well, the leaves uh, work great in this position. I really need to get it on its feet and make sure they work correctly. Uh, before I do that, uh, looks like a little mildew in here. I'm going to clean with some vinegar. And then I'm going to clean these legs. Uh, and I think I'm going to use Murphy's oil soap. This finish is so oily, I'm going to stick with that and use the Murphy's. Boy, the wood looks great when it's wet. It's uh, brighter and redder. Didn't really take much off of these. Uh, now I want to wax one, see what that looks like. I'm doing just that area for now. I'm just trying to see what the color is. All right, I've let this dry for about a half an hour or so. I need to take a mental snapshot of this color. Well, the leaves work great. Uh, they're nice and sturdy, line up. The seam between the leaf and the top is as good as it can be on an antique table. It's not bad at all. So now I'll take these leaves off. And uh, don't worry, I'm going to flip it over on the floor here like I did in the beginning. And then we'll uh, see if we can come up with a stain. To see if this table comes out pretty good, stay tuned for part two coming soon.